M1, then M1 Pro and M1 Max. Now, M1 Max Plus, M1 Extreme, M1 Intel Endgame. Whatever it's called, it's the latest rumor surrounding Apple Silicon Roadmap. Not dual or quad M1 Max like previous reports suggested, but rather another escalation in compute cores right on the same die. But what does that even mean? Hit that subscribe button and bell to support common sense tech and then Let's break all this down. With M1, Apple Silicon gave us up to four IceStorm efficiency cores, four Firestorm performance cores, eight G13 graphics cores, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. M1 Pro dropped down to two E cores, but escalated up to eight P cores, 16 G cores, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Then, then M1 Max gave the people more, not in terms of CPU, but GPU up to 32 cores and 64 gigabytes of RAM, all with this crazy memory bandwidth and fabric to keep it all unified and to keep it all fed. Now, previously, everyone from Bloomberg to the information said that Apple was working on dual and even quad die versions of M1 Max, maybe for the iMac Pro, but way more confidently for the M1 Mac Pro. And yes, dual die and quad die as in basically two or four M1 Max chips working together like a silicon Voltron using even crazier fabric to provide pretty much double and quadruple the CPU, GPU, and RAM performance as the already redonkulously fast MacBook Pro. And I know redonkulously is a made up word, but all words are made up and I'm using it here and now to stress just how far beyond ridiculous we've already come. And by going dual and quad die, Apple would address the one thing that no previous implementation of M1 has even touched, and that's more neural engine cores. Those have stayed just locked down at 16 since the A14, which is the IP foundation of the M1. Now, I don't know who needs 32 or 64 A and E cores outside of Google or Ultron, not to be confused with Voltron because all three are very different robots, but I do know somebody somewhere will want and use them. So there is absolutely that. But there's also one potential problem with dual and quad M1 Max. See, doubling or quadrupling the silicon also doubles or quadruples the power draw, which isn't a big deal on an always plugged in desktop. I mean, if the last decade of Intel and Nvidia have taught us anything, it's that. But with great power draw does come great thermal responsibility. And while that also isn't a problem in the world of do-it-yourself Intel and NVIDIA towers with liquid coolers and all the other amenities, it is a problem for the very, very aesthetically conscious industrial designers at Apple. And yes, sure, they'll do a cheese grater 2.0 if they absolutely have to, just for those big hot Xeon and AMD cards. But the days of iMacs with junk in the back bump, even iMac Pros, those are over. So while Apple could easily fit two to four M1 Max dies within the same thermal envelope as like one overclocked Intel Alder Lake space heater, that's probably not an option for anything that's gonna be as thin as the next generation iMac, even iMac Pro. Two, maybe, at least many of us are hoping, we're hoping for that, but four was just never gonna happen. That's why Apple makes the Mac Pro for maximum Pro Mac Flex. But now what Dylan DKT on Twitter says is that Apple might be doing something different, very different. And I'll get to the when in a minute, but the what is this? Instead of doubling GPU cores the way they did when they went from the M1 Pro to the M1 Max, they'll be adding extra CPU cores on the same or similar single monolithic die. Not a dual or quad M1 Max, but an M1 Extreme or whatever they end up calling it, which honestly could be, maybe should be, just a 12 core CPU M1 Max variant, like they're already a 24 and 32 core GPU variants, because you can't really outmax the Max except by further maxing it out. Otherwise, you'll just be better off not naming it Max anyway, not unless it can be none more Max, sir. Now, according to this rumor, the new SKU wouldn't double the CPU cores, not go to the 20 that we presumably get with a dual die, but to 12 cores which I'm guessing would break down to the same two E cores, but then escalate again with a full 10 P core CPU. And then the same 32 G cores with RAM being the only remaining wild card. It could be 64 like the max, 
or maybe double again to 128. But what are the odds that it would go to, that it could go to 256, like the previous Intel Xeon iMac Pro, Never mind the 1.5 terabytes, terabytes on the current Intel Xeon Mac Pro. And I mean, even 256 or 512 gigabytes of unified memory feeding an M1 Max Max CPU and GPU, just all the compute engines. Yes, I'm gonna use that word again. It would be redonkulous, I decided. Now, of course, I'm only gonna assume the same 64 gigabytes as the current Max, maybe 128, and give 512 the same odds Marquez gives blue bubbles appearing on Android anytime soon. But hey, we nerds can dream. That's also the reason I think Quad Die M1 Max still make the most sense for a full-on Mac Pro or a half-on Mac Pro if reports of it getting smaller are accurate, because after Apple rips and replaces all of those Intel and AMD boards with relatively tiny M1 SOCs, it wouldn't need that full-on tower anyway. But for an iMac Pro, one that's supposed to look way more like the current Pro Display XDR, and for workloads like audio plugins and compilers that are largely CPU dependent, more CPU cores could be exactly what the composers and coders ordered. Especially considering the current 10 core CPU in the MacBooks Pro doesn't even get close to saturating those enclosures, not even under full load for basically ever, not even in the smaller 14 inch enclosure. They can persist longer than the Book of Boba back to flashbacks. But an iMac will have an even bigger, if not much thicker 27 inch enclosure. And that's just lots of room for those two extra P cores, even sustained also indefinitely. And who knows, maybe possibly even more, which is why I know, I just know some of you are already saying, por que no los dos, as in dos die, dual M1 Max on the very top of the iMac Pro food chain. M1 Pro, M1 Max, M1 Extreme, then dual die Max, to just dunk so hard on Alder Lake, it leaves a crater in the earth. And I'd personally all caps love to see that as well, but I'll only expect it when and if I see it, because it just doesn't sound as likely at this point, at least not until that potential M1 Mac Pro teaser at WWDC in June. And all the reports from the reliable to the full on fanfic are saying we might get this M1 iMac Pro as soon as Apple's spring event, which would be March or April, like the M1 iMac non-pro was last year maybe depending on when the iMac Pro itself can three-point land, though it could slip to June, which is when the OG iMac Pro was announced back in 2017, although it didn't debut until, you know, damn near New Year, which is when I'm expecting the full-on M1 Mac Pro to finally ship as well. But of course, I want it all, and I want it all now, and I've been working on my B-roll game so that I'll be ready for whenever it lands, and I've been using Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD's class to do it, right on today's sponsor, Skillshare. He's got hands down the absolute best looking tech reviews in the business. And his class takes you through his whole entire creative process from how he scripts, to how he reads, to how he shoots, everything that you need to get better or just to get started. And Skillshare is by no means limited to just MKBHD's class. It's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone, anybody who loves learning, whether you want to explore your creativity, invest in yourself and your personal growth, or just kick off 2022 with something new. From video and photography to illustration and design, business and freelancing, and so much more, you can find a Skillshare class that'll match your goals, maybe even fuel your new side hustle or career. It's where I go anytime I wanna learn anything because it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and there are always new premium classes available. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And because you're watching this video right now, the first 1,000 of you who click on the link in the description will get a one month trial of Skillshare for free. So just click that button on the screen and start exploring your creativity today. Clicking on that button really helps out this channel and so does hitting that playlist above for more. So much more on Apple Silicon Roadmap and what's coming next. So just hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.